my folks. As you can see, the pool is all full of bees and all other insects that come here to drink water during the summer. Unfortunately, a lot of them uh, sink in the water, like this one. Hope doesn't beat me. <laughs> no, when you save a little insect becomes your friend, it uh, will never sting you. I hope so, I'm so scared. <laughs> so today we are going to solve the problem about insects that cover all the pool and also save all these little insects that is quite sad to watch them drown. So let's get started. Let me take first of all this. This is an LED solar panel. I use this in my garden to light up during the night all the surrounding area. Unfortunately, this is not working anymore. So let me take it apart and let's see what's inside and what can I save for this project. In this case, I will save for sure the solar panel. So let me cut away the LED lights and put them away for future projects and see what's inside. So we have a little circuit board and a battery. The circuit board is to charge the battery during the day and discharging during the night. But let me put everything away and take instead this box. I collect, since I was a child, any type of motor. For example, this is a motor from a PC printer, but I have also motors from little vacuum cleaners or remote cars, any type of motor, really. I'm searching for small motors because I tested the solar panel under the sun and I get 5 volts. And I know for sure that these little motors work very, very well with 5 volts. So, I also keep collecting this yeah, type of things. I really love uh, boats and especially model boats. I found in the garbage this little boat a couple years ago and I always keep it in my workshop. I never know one day I will use it. And today finally is the day. My idea is to collect the mo is to connect the motor to the boat, but I have to build everything. I have to build the shaft to connect the propeller and also something that keep the shaft. The, so, in this case, I will use a stainless steel rod and a brass little tube. As you certainly know, the brass and the stainless steel will spin together with such a low friction that is almost considered like a ball bearing. So, it's a very good idea to use them together. With the drill bit that have the same dimension of the brass little tube, I drill a hole that is perfectly here in the middle, in the back part of the boat. And be careful, this doesn't have to be straight. I have to keep an angle about 30 degrees and now you can imagine. First of all goes the brass tube and this will work to keep away the water and also to keep the, the stainless steel shaft perfectly straight. You can see now that the stainless steel is perfectly centered but the motor is, is centered but is a little bit higher. So I have to mark the shape of the motor using a marker and using a very sharp and pointy chisel, I can cut away wood, the wood. And this is just a matter of a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, this is the result. And now the motor have the same height of the stainless steel shaft. Because now my idea is to connect the motor to the stainless steel. Let me explain you better what I'm thinking about. I will use this very small rubber tube to connect the motor this is a pressure fit, you can see that goes here on the top and spins freely and do the same thing also on the stainless steel shaft. Using some rubber in this case is a very good idea because it can absorb all vibrations and it can also correct misalignment of the, the parts, so it's a very really good solution for homemade projects. So everything goes together inside, so the brass tube and the stainless steel rod goes here on the back, just push it with not so much force, I don't want to bend everything right now. And now I also enlarge the hole so that the rubber part can spin freely and using some epoxy glue I can glue in place the motor and the brass tube on the back. Be careful, don't put epoxy glue inside the motor, otherwise everything gets stuck. So, let me take now instead uh, something else. I'm talking about the uh, solar panel, because this solar panel isn't made for working in a swimming pool or in water, it's just made to work under the sun. So it's a very good idea to, co to cover all the electric connection with some uh, paint, nail paint, that I stole away from my girlfriend. Put a good amount of this paint all around the solar panel and on the electric connection, this will seal everything and keep protect everything. 
With the soldering iron, I just have to solder the cables in place to the motor. So we have the positive and negative looking this way. If you get, for example, that the motor is spinning in, a, in the wrong direction, you just have to unsolder the cable and connect them in the opposite way. I bought now in a local shop this very small propeller that is used usually in uh, remote control boats. I can cut away the stainless steel shaft that is absolutely too long for this project and I can glue in place with some epoxy glue the little propeller here on the back. Okay, as you can see now, if, you, if I make some shadow on the solar panel, I slow down significantly the propeller. This means that we get a lot of sun. Now it's a very hot summer here in Italy, so the power isn't missing and I can make going this boat all day long. But something is missing. I'm talking about like a little net can, that can help me to save the little insects. So I put like some fabric with a little holes all the way through and this for sure will help little insects to crawl up and save their lives by themselves. So let's see how it works. And this finally guys is the end result. I'm very excited because it was just an idea in my mind and then come reality and it works great. As you see, I put fabric with a lot of holes here on the back and this is a great thing because if, if you think about insects uh, at the bottom of their legs have a lot of little hooks so that they can grab very easily on the fabric and save them themselves from drawing down. Uh, it was really very nice. I also put some silicone around the motor and around all the electric connection so now the boat can almost go underwater without problems. But also something that was very good was the fact that this fabric on the side of the boat uh, w works great also like a stabilizer can stabilize the boat very very firmly and this works great I was also thinking that something like this has to be sold in the shops I don't know why that doesn't exist already because keep the pool clean save lives and it's also very very fun to watch anyway if you enjoy this type of projects probably you should also check
check out my previous projects about how to make an electric, electric motor for the kayak and also how to attach propellers to the feet to go underwater without uh, swimming. You just use the propellers to move underwater. So check them out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao, ciao!